the best of the French automotive industry, Renault says. Hold my wine. We are presenting to you the all-new Renault Rafale. And this is supposed to be their flagship model, a crossover SUV, quite large already. And they want to show off with this here. Does it work? We'll find out with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go with a very expressive front right here in this, I would say, Renault logo, tiny Renault logo design. And the large Renault logo here is where the sensor is hidden underneath. That's actually quite cool. And then to the side, you can see where I have the turning indicators at the moment. This is then where the usual daytime running light is. And the main headlamp unit here, you can optionally also get this matrix LED lamp. The length is 4 meters 71 or 185 inches. And you can see already this coupe style alike in the rear. Wheels 20 inch or optional 21 inch. These are the 20 inch wheels. That's also the Esprit Alpine trim level. So already a higher trim level here for this 200 horsepower hybrid. There will later be also be a plug-in hybrid with 300 horsepower available, which then also gets an electric motor at the rear axle. And talking about the rear axle, you get an option or standard here with the Esprit Alpine trim, a rear axle steering. And then it goes five degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels, maybe reducing the turning circle, for example up to a threshold of 50 kilometers an hour. The rear axis steering, by the way, especially if you do like a U-turn here, this is amazing because it's not a short vehicle, but it feels like a small vehicle than in the in the U-turn. And also when you're here at lower speeds and you do some slalom, then it really feels like the rear axle would be like coming around a little bit like a rear wheel drive or something. So um, it's always a very unique effect from this rear axle steering. Suspension, you would normally get a normal base suspension, only that plug-in hybrid exclusively gets an adaptive or an active suspension with a camera that looks ahead. In the rear, I also activate the turning indicator here, which has yeah, this really nice cascading effect. But the daytime running lights in red also look pretty cool, actually, when they're on. And this Rafale, or Rafale, you say in French, Rafale, you don't speak the E, comes from a 1930s airplane they built. And this airplane is actually also present inside the vehicle. Here, Leah has found that for you. <laughs> this is like an Easter egg. And this is in that electrochrome panoramic roof at the very rear. So what I want is that they put this new flagship model and then they have this classic, very old school Renault key card. Would you like that? Tell me in the comments. Door closing sound. Mm. Yeah, that is actually really bad, honestly. So that sounds like, like there's no dampening at all, but there are also very cool things to come now, I can promise. Inside of the doors, top part, a soft touch. And then we have here in the Esprit Alpine trim, these you know beautiful colors here, French flag, of course. And then that's very cool, a blue covering here on the inside of the door pockets. That's a great idea. And then we have the steering wheel which has this mix of real buttons and you know more or less capacitive buttons so it's really mixed but i think it's overall okay digital instruments so more detail that. and then these seats here so you either get fabric seats in a techno trim or this here the esprit alpine trim then you have alcantara seat so here's the alcantara on the inside outside this is supposed to remind you of motorcycle protectors from the clothing it's very interesting it's a high grade leatherette then and the whole seat and the steering wheel all the Renault cars that are coming up now and even the existing model portfolio um, by 2025, they are completely animal free as for the materials. That is a consistent approach, less hurt to the animals and of course also better for the environment. So uh, kudos for that. And then headroom here with 189, 642, still some headroom left. This is equipped with a panoramic roof. And this panoramic roof is an option, 1,500 euros. It's electrochrome. So here you can actually put it transparent like that. You can also see this effect that you can stop in the middle. Here then it um, gets this shade. You can put half half for example and continue then all the way through like this. So this is also a very exclusive feature where Renault tries to be more upmarket. Steering wheel goes in and out, up and down, smooth way. And I would say, let's take a look at the cockpit. Last remark to the seating. It's actually quite firm. It's a very sporty seat. These are the electric controls, but overall, yeah, decent comfort. And then we have here this very interesting cockpit atmosphere, for example, with the slate decor here. So first time that's used in the 
certain car actually on the interior, you would alternatively also get a cork trim, for example. Then the glove box here, let's see, it's also smoothly dampened like that. The middle console is really large actually and has this huge thing where you can rest your hand on or you can also use this as to um, you know, slide this forward. This is an inductive charging pad for your smartphone. It's not cool, however. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what is this inspired by. There's space underneath. Maybe this is a little bit too bulky or what would you say? And the reason here behind this slidable middle rest is they thought, you know, while driving, especially sometimes when you do something in the infotainment, and then comes a bump and some, so that you rest your arm on here like this and then depending on how long your arm is or if you want to have it here or maybe then like this or especially here to do something in the infotainment so it's actually a help that while driving you can be more static while controlling the infotainment system and then you can adjust the length like where you want to have your arm being rested on that's the reason behind it in the front, adaptive cup holders, two USB-C chargers. And then this is like a split armrest opening where you can put then all the clutter underneath. And then here we have the rather vertical screen in the middle. This is here Android Automotive based. Good decision. Let Google do its thing. It's inbuilt uh, Google Maps, for example. At the same time, it also supports Apple CarPlay, as you can see it right here. And this is really nice. Look at that. Ah, beautiful clicking sounds here, separate climate unit here also for the fan speed, that's good. And then, for example, to activate the steering wheel heating or seat heating is here. So um, everything actually straightforward. The driver POV looks like this. This is here this multi-sense button. Then you can also change through the different driving modes here, for example, and sport mode in the digital instruments. And they also have different stylings for that one. Look at that. Um, it is, let's say, um, progressive or avant-garde styling, so something creative for sure. And you can also get a head-up display. And then right next to the steering wheel, one, two, three. So this is here the shifting lever. This is in for the wipers and this is in here for volume and so on. You know I'm a friend of manual controls, but is this maybe a little bit too much? Rear seats, doors, hard pack here on the top, softer than here, once again with the contrast, and then a nice blue felt covering on the inside once again, I really like that. And the nice Alcantara seats we have here, also with this perforation here, blue shines through, Isofix outsides each, and uh, on the front seat as well, Isofix by the way. And then I have a lot of leg room here left, so that's good, good use of the whole package. It's also decently comf here, comfortable here in the rear. And the headroom, although it's this coupe effect, um, yeah, there's still enough headroom here with 189 or 602. And they can also enjoy this uh, panoramic roof from here. So actually quite nice and interesting also how here the middle seat has this integration of the head restraint. And then you can fold that whole thing down. Look at that. And then you have cup holders here and this massive middle console. You can even open that two USB-C chargers, so this is like more executive character, and this is very interesting. Look at that. So this is in here um, like a smartphone holder. We can pull it out like this, and like this, forward, and then you can put like a tablet or a smartphone um, in here. I'm not sure though how... Yeah, uh, it's like... This is with rubber lip, but I think with the case it's like not ideal yeah like this but i mean it, 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 yeah i think it, it yeah ipad is maybe slimmer but yeah. like this um it, it, it does work it does work like that so um, yeah i mean why not um so this is a very interesting never listen to that never seen something like this before so um and then this whole thing here can also be fold down this that then very interesting right would then be the ski hatch so um yeah very interesting solution and the middle seat is it usable actually yes you can drive this car with five tall adults as for the boot is actually oh where's the button ah it's hidden here underneath so we have a full boot or full trunk volume for you here today everything we could basically pack in and the cool thing is that the length is here it's like 90 centimeters or 35 inches and the width here is a good meter of 40 inches and you can see here for two people is no problem to fold the seats however you definitely have to go around 
um, there's no possibility from there. And then you can fold here two third, one third, or also the middle part, ski hatch would also be possible. Under the hood, there is a, oh, also with gas struts, there's a 1.2 liter three cylinder, still beeping at the moment, has been running here with the AC on and so on. It's yeah, uh, way over 30 degrees here Celsius outside today. So 1.2 liter three cylinder engine, turbo petrol. So very small combined with the hybrid system. Here the inbuilt hybrid around 200 horsepower. So around 8.9 seconds in the acceleration figure. And this has two electric motors, one directly powering the wheels and an ISG. So it's an integrated starter generator that's actually powering up the engine, automatic transmission. And this one only front-wheel drive. The plug-in hybrid would have an electric motor, an additional one at the rear axle at 300 horsepower. The acceleration difference is 8.9 for this one here and 6.4 seconds then for the plug-in hybrid model. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Renault Rafale and being here the 200 horsepower hybrid. When you drive in the city, you just start slowly from traffic light to traffic light and I also see this EV uh, lettering there. And so at this moment we're driving fuel electric. So from this two kilowatt hour buffer battery in this hybrid system, now the EV disappeared a little bit quicker than here now and we are you know, driving towards a quicker road and so on. Um, so it always goes then back and forth, you can watch it or just let the car do its thing basically. So there's a big acceleration difference between the hybrid here and the plug-in hybrid. This one here is yeah, just like 8.9 8 seconds, under 9 seconds. And the plug-in hybrid, 300 horsepower with the all-wheel drive would be 6.4 seconds. So if you want something quicker, you would need to do you know, that. You have here this multi-sense button and you can also go to a sport mode. And then we can show you the first acceleration. Go. Oh, that was 110. So we had to reduce speed there, but yeah, that was actually quite quick. And you really feel that um, it starts with the electric acceleration first. You get this electric boost, and then the combustion engine sets in. It sometimes, you know, it is very, very well insulated from the vehicle, yes. And the rest you hear from it not here at high speeds, here at high speeds the rolling noise from tires is louder anyways, but in the city you sometimes then hear the combustion engine if it's on and this has this typical three cylinder sound which is very special, let's take it that way, it's only a 1.2 liter three cylinder, so very small engine, that's why it only works to be somewhat quick in combination with this hybrid system. The seats are actually quite firm here, this Alcantara but they're actually good, so this feels sophisticated indeed. And here at 100 kilometers an hour, we also set the cruise control right here on the left side. So we are, for example, activate the mode, active assist. And then we can also change the speed right here. So, oh, is there, <laughs> it's a toilet loaded in front of us. <laughs> very, yeah, very nice view, isn't it? So here the speed is being, you know, distance being kept. Here when the car disappears, then it's also picking up, and let's see how the lane keeping assist keeps up. Yeah, so far, actually quite some, no like hectic movement to keep the car in the lane or something. So that's good. And I think here at 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, from the noise insulation, I wouldn't say it's not too bad, but it's also nothing special. How, how would you say, yeah. Yeah. I think the Škoda Octavia recently was a little bit louder, was it? Was it? I think so, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, they, I mean, they stress that they, with this vehicle especially, paid a lot of attention to detail and quality and so on. So it feels a little bit sophisticated in the driving, so it's actually fine. Suspension is actually not set to the stiffest note, so this is normal suspension here. And when I change the lanes, you see also Leah's beautiful legs. They move <laughs> around quite a lot actually. Um, and yeah, the thing is, I don't get the best feeling for the vehicle, honestly. So the steering here is, um, not natural, let's take it that way. So here, there's nothing happening. And when I come into this area here, then there's a lot happening with the steering input. So um, to me, this feels a little bit imbalanced, in controlled. so you don't have a natural feeling for the steering wheel. The surface, however, here, this new animal-free material, and also with the nice Alcantara insets, that's beautiful. So um, yeah, really nicely done, and feels really premium, really high class, also with the contrast distance and so on. And this is also something that reflects in driving, that you just have a little more fun when you see and experience these details than also while driving. 
the sport mode I wouldn't say it makes the, the biggest difference in here in the eco mode of course you can stress this hybrid driving e uh, even a little bit further here driving slower you see the EV symbol once again in the instruments that means at the moment here just electrically rolling and this of course then keeps the consumption down at the end of the driving part we'll keep you updated with our final consumption for today let's see if you accelerate out here the corner front wheel drive yeah you feel that this, you're getting pulled from the front and to me the, the interesting finding is because it really depends on hybrid and uh, powertrains from you know which manufacturer you have it feels a lot electric you know what I mean so for our hybrid system here for example the Toyota Lexus hybrid systems as soon as you go on the throttle usually the combustion engine hops on here we have a lot of electric moments actually and also when we accelerate so this is um, very interesting and because it's not the smallest buffer here for an inbuilt hybrid with this two kilowatt hours bigger of course 22 kilowatt hours with the plug-in hybrid then you could also do you know, you know full like a, like a pure electric driving for a longer period of time and here in the roundabout yeah once again i mean it feels quite nice but to me it's really like the steering feel it should be a little bit more natural you know I, I feel no natural progression in the you know when, when i turn the steering that's uh, still okay you know nothing super bad but definitely you know comparing to to other cars and what uh, setup they have actually found when i use this multi-sense button by the way and also go to sport mode once again also always changes the color so you know actually in which mode you are but here's for example in the sport mode the combustion engine is already on and there are not so many electric moments so if you want to save more fuel I definitely keep it for example with the eco mode and then it happens actually quicker that the hybrid system is being used and you're just electrically rolling and so on so here in the city it actually doesn't feel too large I mean it's at this moment I think the largest um, passenger vehicle for me is 71 and you don't feel that that much it doesn't feel large I mean considering the size of the vehicle here also when driving a city I feel it feels astonishingly compact um, yeah I mean that's that's definitely a good thing and also here at lower speeds it's it's really calm you know especially in once again the electric driving modes it's here the speed hump it's okay there are 20 inch wheels mounted here so suspension wise as Ra said on the soft note you also see that for example let me uh, use the brakes now relatively late I'm not sure if you can see it on camera but the car is then leaning a little bit to the forward um, and also when I accelerate you, you see that so suspension is more set on the comfort note which is I think um, perfectly fine and a right decision the wheels then again I mean there are no smaller wheels than the 20 inch available definitely not go for 21 inch um, because when the road is fine like this it's also fine you know but when the road is kind of destroyed um, yeah it tends to get also uncomfortable because of these large wheels there's just not enough dampening left from the tire flank then um, yeah, so definitely have to take that into account. But I mean, especially due to the all the interior special things, unique things in the interior, you you somehow get a different spirit here, as I say, like uh, Esprit Alpine. So this Alpine spirit they have here from their Alpine sporty brand, it does give you a very nice, sophisticated feeling. Um, also here, this is then I think they are here. It's very very special. This slate, I mean, slate is sometimes used. Um, I mean. We have uh, seen like in the restaurants where mm -hmm. they serve yeah. on slate. This it's a very beautiful, like really it. heavy, but that's cool. And of course, um, you know, like on houses, you know, on the side or on the roof and something. Um, first time it's used in the car. Different trim would be cork used actually. So I think nice new design ideas. And this is actually what I enjoy most about this vehicle that I enjoy also these small details at the steering wheel and so on while driving. If this is here the best solution with this huge handrest. Um, not sure about that from the design solution but the other solutions are really really very nice and yeah the most astonishing thing to me is that definitely that although it's their largest vehicle in the passenger segment it kinda feels small and agile and easy to handle in the city and then you can also make use of course of this hybrid drive chain because all the time we've been talking now here in city driving that's why I'm also stressing city driving a little bit more here today um, because like big German cars they're more like Autobahn 200 kilometers an hour 125 miles an hour it's not the specialty of this vehicle here 
but especially making use of this hybrid drive system and that is working very well and you see here it's almost a thousand kilometers or 600 miles um, of range left you know like 940 kilometers at the moment when the fuel is completely full um, and that's of course very impressive considering it's like not a diesel with a large fuel tank or something you know so i really like that here by the way um, it also depends on the driving mode from the steering um, feedback and interesting finding here in the eco mode everything is set to a soft note and usually i would prefer the sport mode for the steering input however since here everything is soft now okay that was a quote from star wars now like you know that theatrical scene where like oh I, you know i'm anakin i don't like sand but here's every here everything is soft terrible writing for that scene definitely yeah back to the car so i found it better in the eco mode actually because in the sport mode they say hey we let's give more feedback from the steering but that happens at the outer part and that is what's making it unnatural so interesting i was right with the sport mode but definitely the steering is better and more predictable in the eco mode or in the comfort mode that's very interesting isn't it so um it's cool yeah so and what i also want to do is let me just stop here because i want to do an acceleration like um you know like from from standstill sport mode zero to 60. oh that was already 70. yeah um why not and i mean yeah i think quick enough already also with this hybrid version because you have to think about if you then go for the plug-in hybrid yeah there the price of course would be even higher as for consumption we could score some five liters or more kilometers like 45 mbg us 55 mbg uk the hybrid system is better used in the city or when going downhill you can now recuperate a lot of energy and so on when you're then going a long way just motorway straight it doesn't have so much advantages anymore pricing also very interesting starts here around 44,000 euros as a german reference price and as it stands here right now with the esprit alpine trim level and also with some more extras you can also crack some 50,000 euros and that's of course then very expensive inside there is no portfolio however it's still like 20 30,000 euros less expensive than some other premium competitors but then you also have to see the limits yes you pay less but in a way you also get less especially as for engine performance and the driving dynamics and so on this one you don't buy because it's the best in segment but because it's very extraordinary what do you think about tell me in the comments and also compare some competitors